In 2006, AEP completed construction of its Wyoming Jackson's Ferry 765 kV project. This extra high voltage power line is the first enhancement of AEP's transmission system in over 30 years and the first six conductor bundle design ever constructed in North America. All of AEP's previous 2,000 miles of 765 kV power lines were built with a four conductor bundle arrangement. The new line utilizes a six conductor bundle arrangement and more wires means more challenges for the engineering and construction teams. One of the most complex tasks in building the Wyoming Jackson's Ferry 765 kV project was the process of stringing the six conductor bundle to the tower. But before the wire can be strung, the hardware and insulation that attaches it to the tower must be installed. The hardware, including suspension clamps, compression dead ends, clevises, and yoke plates, were manufactured by Salvi in Milan, Italy. After doing this several times, the crew knows exactly how to position their rigging. Proper rigging techniques are a vital part of installation process, not only from a safety standpoint, but also to reduce the risk of insulator damage. Once the insulator assembly is hoisted to the proper position, the crew pins the assembly to the appropriate attachment points on the tower. Once the assembly is attached, the tension is released on the hoist ropes, allowing the insulators to hang in their proper position. The helicopter continues to fly the lead line to the next structure or to the end of the wire pull where the linemen secure it to an anchor point on the pulling machine. A similar process is used for the outside faces of the tower. Again, with precision and accuracy, the pilot maneuvers the lead line into the conductor block. The lead line is automatically placed into the block by the Pac-Man device as the gates feed the line into the center shiv. Commences. The gator starts its journey as it leaves the tensioner and moves toward the first structure. The conductor feeds off the reels evenly the operator controls the brakes on the real trailer from his control panel while he controls the tension on the individual conductors with the bullwheel brakes. This precise control of the tension ensures the conductors are installed to specification. After the conductor reaches the last structure, the pull is stopped. The six conductors of all three phases are temporarily attached the tower with grips and hoists. At this point, the conductors are sagged to their correct tension by using hoists. Once all the conductors are sagged, they are permanently attached to the tower. A conventional dead-end body is installed on each conductor at one end of the wire pole. The dead-end includes a steel eye that is pressed onto the steel core of the conductor, after which the aluminum body is slid over the steel eye section and compressed to complete the assembly. For the turn conductor, the aluminum portion of the sleeve carries the current and approximately 64% of the tension, while the inner steel core carries approximately 36% of the wire tension. After all of the dead-end bodies have been installed, the conductors are then attached to NGK LOX polymer insulators with hardware designed and developed by Salvi. The hardware consists of suspension clamps, compression dead ends, and a series of clevises and yoke plates. Once the insulators are attached to the dead end bodies, the entire assembly is pinned to the tower. A pre-assembled set of polymer insulators with its associated hardware is delivered to a dead end tower for installation. Once all the conductor is pulled in, sagged, and attached to the dead end towers, it is time to clip in the conductor on the suspension towers. The clip-in involves raising the conductors out of the stringing blocks and attaching them with suspension clamps to the yoke plates. This places the conductor in its final position. The linemen measure and mark the offset distance on the conductor. This distance is measured from a plumb line from the center of the tower cross arm and designates where the suspension clamp is centered
before it is tightened to hold the conductor in its final position. Once the straps of the lifting yoke are attached, the conductors are slowly lifted out of the stringing blocks and into position. After the conductors are clamped into the suspension clamps and pinned to the yoke plate, the stringing block is raised, unpinned, and moved away. The Hughes 500 carries the stringing block back to the material yard. After the conductor clipping is finished, the linemen attach grating rings to each side of the yoke plate. Grating rings are used to reduce the electric field intensity on the hardware in order to prevent occurrence of visible corona, radio and television interference, and audible noise. Once complete, the clipping crew and their equipment is transferred to the next tower. 